the lob. The lob grips swing body just like anything else. When it comes down, for example, hitting a one-handed underspin lob, the body balance would be very much the same where you're going to stay sideways, your arms are lined like this. Granted, there's going to be times where you just would be on your back foot because you want to be able to increase the upward angle and have the lob be launched higher into the air. When you think of a lob, people don't really practice a lob until they're finally in a match and they're just throwing up courtesy shots. You need to practice, practice, practice a lob. People go out and do baskets. We should send players lobs and they have to hit. Time after time, the same basic lob. In today's tennis, so many kids start at an early age and they're trying to have competitive success at an early age. They use an extreme grip, say for example on the forehand side, because it's conducive to playing a ball where the contact point is above your shoulder. It's so common for players not to be able to hit a defensive lob. So you just take your palm basically where it's behind the racket. You can have it on the third panel. It's finger, 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 thumb, finger. Palm guidance. You open the racket face and you just go up in this position. If you miss three feet long, you go three feet higher. Actually, for those of you who are working with entry level players, you're better off to teach the lob first and the ground stroke second. What you want to do is get someone to get way below the ball, hit the ball way up in the air, have a high vertical swing where the, the hitting zone stays on the same side of their body longer. Then what we need to do is go, okay, now I will teach topspin. So I taught people to get the racket below the ball and lift. Now they just approach the contact point with the vertical racket face and go up in this position. As I uh, said on the court, uh, perhaps you'll see it later in, the, in one of the following chapters, is with the lob, the topspin lob can be hit offensively and defensively. The underspin lob can be hit offensive defensively. But it's so important for a young player not to be limited to just playing topspin lobs. So that's where, just like hitting a volley, you organize yourself in the ready position, you turn, and you want efficiency. You want the least amount of moving parts the least amount of muscle recruitment. So you turn in this position, you have disguise. The racket starts up high, but then as you fall with the racket below the ball, you open the racket face. You get way underneath, and you go up as high as possible. Typically, when you hit a lob, you want to make sure that your opponent is pushed back where they're hitting the overhead between the service line and the baseline. So the higher, the better. I think if people go to a place like Madison Square Garden and finally see great players play indoors, then they have a reference point to how high the pros really lob. And the lob is a drive. You just have to get underneath it and go way, way up. With um, the lob, again, it's an underestimated shot. Um, I think of Arthur Ashe said he didn't learn to lob until he was 33 years old. With Jimmy Connors, I mentioned that on the court, he has a great return to serve, or he was known for that. His best shot was really the lob. So anyway, it's practice, practice, practice. It's, when you do hit a topspin lob, we, we've covered that, where now you can go to the grip you hit with topspin. You go underneath, and then the racket goes up. Like inst Instead of driving the ball where you're going up a flight of stairs, you go up where it's like you're going up an elevator. But those are just a few thoughts on the lob.